Hi, I'm Mike Rankin, Editor-in-Chief of InDesign Secrets, and in this video, I'll show you the trick for making perfect concentric shapes in InDesign. You can see some examples here of the effect that I'm talking about, simple shapes that get larger or smaller centered on the same point. And the way to do this is to use a shortcut for duplicating and transforming objects at the same time with the control panel. There are two different ways to go. You can work from the inside out, starting with the smallest shape and working your way to the largest, or work from the outside in, starting with the biggest shape and going to the smallest. The advantage of starting from the smallest shape is that there's virtually no limit to the number of objects you can create. The advantage of starting from the biggest shape is that it's easy to select any of the shapes when they have a fill applied to them. If you start from the biggest shape, you do need to plan ahead. Say I wanted to create 10 concentric circles. The exact size I want in the end doesn't matter because I can change that at any time after I make them but the number of objects I want to create is important. It's also important to choose the right unit of measure in order for this trick to work smoothly. I find it easiest to work in centimeters, so I'll switch to them by right-clicking on the intersection of the rulers and choosing centimeters. I'll go to a blank page in my document, I'll press the W key to get out of preview mode, and I'll go to the Object Styles panel and make sure I have selected the Basic Graphics Frame style. Then I'll go up to the control panel and set the stroke to zero width. This will help make sure our circles are sized exactly right. And I'll also add a fill color of white. Then to make 10 circles starting from the biggest, I'll take the ellipse tool and click on the page. And in this dialog box, I'll enter 10 centimeters for both the width and the height to make a circle. Then I'll go up to the control panel and make sure the center reference point is selected and the button to constrain proportions is pressed. Then to duplicate the circle and make it smaller, I'll hold the Option key on Mac or Alt on Windows and click the down arrow for either the width or the height. And my new circle is center aligned with the old one and it's nine centimeters in width and height. I'll hold Option or Alt and click the down arrow eight more times. And I have my 10 concentric circles. If I try to make another, I get an error. So that's the limitation of starting from the biggest and working your way to the smallest. You have to plan ahead and know how many objects you want to create. But here's the benefit. Since each new copy is placed on top of the old ones, it's easy to select any of them when they have a fill color. So starting with the outermost circle, I'll shift click to select every other one with the selection tool. And use the swatches panel to apply a different fill color. And I get the bullseye effect. Now if you wanted to resize this whole thing, you can drag to select all the circles, hold the shift key, and drag to make them all as small or large as you want. And you can also create interesting designs just by switching to the direct selection tool, selecting them all, and changing the alignment to top aligned, bottom aligned, or you can align left or right. And anytime you want to get back to the original look, just press the buttons to center align. Another fun way to play around is to take the direct selection tool and just select some points. I'll go right through the center and apply a skew or rotation, and see what kind of things you can create. I'll go to the next page, and here, let's try starting from the smallest shape and going to the biggest. I'll take the ellipse tool again, and click to make a circle one centimeter in diameter. And this time, I'll hold Option and click the up arrow by the width or height to make bigger copies of the circle. Notice each one covers the last, so I can't see them all when there's a fill applied but I can keep going and make as many as I want. Then I can select them all, remove the fill, apply a stroke, and there are my concentric circles. And I can do the same kinds of tricks by selecting points, and then transforming them. So that's how to create concentric objects in InDesign. Thanks for watching this video, and if you want lots more tips like this, be sure to check out InDesignSecrets.com and subscribe to InDesign Magazine.